If you've been waiting to check out lossless scaling, now might be the time. So recently I checked out AFMF2 because they officially launched it, I don't know, like a month ago or whatever with the Ally X and they rolled out the update and all that good stuff. And everyone in the comments said, Andy, 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 check out lossless scaling. And I was like, oh, I've already got it, but I hadn't actually really used it yet because I was waiting for a better update. And that day is here. We've got lossless scaling frame gen three, which came out on January the 10th. And I thought, well, let's just check it out. So if you don't know what lossless scaling frame gen is, Lossless Scaling is a paid app on Steam, which is about $8. It works out £5.90 or something here in the UK. So you have to buy this, right? But it's not just frame generation. There is upscalers and other stuff, but it lets you tweak it more so than AFMF2. So it could be seen as slightly better. A lot of people prefer this. I'll let you be the judge of that. I'll give you my thoughts at the end of this, but let's check it out. Check out how to use it and what I recommend and test it out in Resident Evil 4 Remake. So here we've got the Steam page and the update, right? Which is from January the 10th, LSFG3, Frame Gen 3, let's call it that. It's built on a new efficient architecture that introduces significant improvements in quality performance and latency. That is a big one. Latency is a big thing when introducing false frames and that's why I kind of waited until now to try this because I did test it like a few updates before and I was a bit like, oh, the latency is horrible, but it is more improved now. So key improvements, we've got better quality, reduce flickering and border artifacts, which are going to happen regardless because this is not baked into a game, right? This is software based frame generation and upscaling. It is not the same as let's say FSR 3 or whatever, where a dev will implement it to work with that game. This is like a software forced overlay, forcing it to upscale, forcing it to frame gen, which is like not approved by the developers, right? This is for games that don't already have that and it's going to help improve that experience. But there are drawbacks like latency as well as artifacting, which we definitely will see when we start testing this in a minute. Now, the big one here, which is another reason why frame generation is a win on portable devices like this, is a 40% reduction compared to the previous frame gen of theirs, right? This uses a lot less power, so you can keep your battery like going for longer because you can output less power by drawing the TDP back and then getting more frames, right, by introducing these false ones. Now there is a resolution scaling mode, which we'll take a look at, but basically this feature remains an excellent way to further reduce GPU load. So again, this is basically, as far as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, kind of like when you're upscaling, let's just take FSR because we're probably all very familiar with that. And you've got, let's say, performance mode, quality mode and balance mode, for example, right? This slider is going to change the resolution of these false frames. So the the lower the resolution, so if you put it on like 50%, it's going to be half the resolution for each frame, right? Which is going to cost less in terms of power and output and GPU load so that you're going to get better performance at a lower cost. However, you're going to get more artifacts and more visual like degradation there. Whereas if you kept it at 100%, it's going to be like the best quality. And that's kind of what I've found in my testing. I'm not too sure if that's exactly how it works, but it certainly feels that way when you're playing a game. But of course, at 100%, it's going to be costing more power. We've also got improved latency by 24%. Now it still says here about base frame rate. And it's funny that they give you like a bunch of different options. So a minimum of 30 FPS. So this, this stuff ain't magic, right? If you, if you're running a game at like five FPS, it's not gonna, and you stick on like four times FPS, it's not going to run at a decent frame rate. I know that would only be 20 FPS, right? But you know what I'm saying? If the game's running at like 15 FPS, it's not going to feel like 50. It's still going to feel like 15 FPS. It just kind of smooths over the cracks. So you want a stable frame rate first. And I mean stable, you do not want a fluctuating one, ideally. So that's going to give you better performance. But the thing is, is it says minimum of 30 FPS. That's kind of like meh. Then it says 40 or higher preferred. So that's kind of like the okay mark. In my testing, I find anything around 45 FPS is the best. And then it says, well, best, I mean like minimum for like 
the the perfect experience, right? And then you've also got 60 FPS being ideal. Now, 60 FPS is gonna like best case scenario. If you're locked at 60 already, you're gonna hit 120 and it's gonna be nice and smooth. You know, everything's all good, right? But obviously if you're running at like 25 FPS, it's gonna still feel a bit choppy. And that's just what I found with every frame generation thing that I've tried. Now, what I would say once you've bought this app, if you're going to buy it, is use the beta. That is much cleaner to understand. Like the UI is way nicer. So to activate that, what you wanna do is go into the settings just here, go down to properties, go to betas, and then just click up here and go to beta there, right? And then cancel that out and then you're good to go. Now, because this opens up as, as an app, if you're like me and use the auto control mode mainly, right? You'll notice that your, your controller can't control it because it's saying like, no, this is a desktop app. You might already find that with, I don't know, Steam. That is an example, right? So you open up Steam like this and then you can't control it anymore unless you go and change that to desktop mode. I hate that. So what you could do, this is like a sidestep by the way, is just go into like game platforms, for example. You'd do the same with lossless scaling. Press X, go to set game profile, go to key mapping, go to right stick here and then change that to mouse cursor. I've changed left click to the right bumper, right trigger is right click, and then left stick I've set to D-pad or arrow keys. And now I can control it without having to swap into desktop mode. I can just stay on auto at all times and my controls will just work on anything, whether that's desktop or not, providing I've configured the app here, right? So I've already done that for lossless scaling, so I can control it here without messing around. That's just a little tip for you guys. So now we're here. This is the like main hub, right, for lossless scaling. And you can upscale here. So you can use LS1, FSR, NIS, and you can upscale that way if you want. We're not doing any upscaling here. We are literally just going to be looking at the frame generation. So here you've got all the old types, so they let you mess around with that if you want, but no, we're here for number three. So I'm selecting three. We're going to be on two times mode, but you can see it goes up to four times, or you can do a custom amount and change it, but let's stick to two times. Resolution scale is here, right? So this is what I was talking about earlier. So it says processes input frames at a reduced resolution and generates output at the original resolution resolution to improve performance. So yeah, it's kind of what I was saying earlier, I guess, but a slightly opposite way where it's actually taking the incoming feed at a reduced type and then trying to match the output resolution with the new frame. So let's just put it on like 50 like or 60 for example, right? But dropping it down will save your GPU utilization so you'll be using less power but you will introduce more artifacts. That's why I'm dropping it down to 60 to show you these artifacts, right? And then we'll pump it back up to 100 and we'll see that most of those artifacts go away. Now I've come down a bit, I've got sync mode as default, I've made max frame latency one. So this is how many frames can be queued up by the GPU before it gets pushed out. Kind of how like V-Sync works, where it like stacks up, you know, frames before it releases them if they're out of sync with your screen, that kind of thing. So obviously the lower the number, the better the latency is going to be. You can increase the number, and it will increase performance, but you'll get more latency, right? So this is gonna be more demanding, but we're gonna get a better experience out of it. Probably stick it to like two or three if you want to, but I've been playing around with one and it seems fine. Now draw FPS, you want that on so that you can see the FPS number up in the top corner, which we definitely wanna see because we wanna see it working, right? Everything else, you just leave. Right, so now open your game and make sure you say launch anyway, even though there's a, another app open, don't do close app because that's gonna close lossless scaling. We, we want that open in the background, okay? So now I'm in Resident Evil. I've got this like pretty pumped up because I'm gonna be dropping the resolution and stuff, right? But anyway, I've got it set currently to 1080p, but I will drop this down. But what we must have with lossless scaling is it to either be in borderless window or windowed mode. Now, I saw somewhere that it said like, oh, you can use the frame gen thing whilst it's in full screen, but then I wasn't getting the overlay, so I wasn't entirely sure whether it was working or not. <laughs> so the overlay is only showing up for me at least when it's in windowed or 
borderless window mode. So that's kind of like a, a bit of a negative because with Air from F2, you can play in, you know, full screen mode. I've got them high in terms of texture quality up to six gigabytes. So, you know, it's a mixture of high, medium and low on this. And you'll see because it chugs at 1080p, but when you drop it down, it's actually totally playable uh, in terms of like 720p or 900p, especially with an upscaler or whatever. I have no upscaling on here whatsoever currently. So I'm in the game currently, right? Now what I need to do is back out of this. So we can do that via two ways. We can either press this button and go to show desktop or if you're a heathen that touches the screen, you can slide up and then go to lossless the scaling here. You wanna hit scale and then you've got five seconds to get back in the game. So we're gonna press scale and then go back to the game and give it a few seconds and you'll see a number any second now pop up in the corner. There we go. So it's currently saying 20, what, 27 FPS at 1080p here and lossless scaling is frame genning it up to 57. Right, so it says, yeah, so I'm getting around 25 FPS, 27, 24, about that, but it's actually throwing it up to 58. So almost 60 FPS from 25 FPS. I'm at 30, so it's, it fluctuates between 25 to 30 FPS and I'm getting around 50 to 60 FPS from lossless scaling frame gen, right? So that is a pretty good upscale, you know, like in terms of like frames. And what I really like is that it's a split FPS, so it shows you exactly what the base game is running at, like the raw output of frames, and then what lossless scaling is actually giving you here, right? And honestly, it's possible. If you were just playing without nitpicking, then you, you could play this. I wouldn't recommend like any kind of multiplayer or FPS game if it's not something like this, where it's like a little bit slow. I do feel latency just out of feeling, right? You know, you get that feeling, man, like, I can't tell you exactly how much latency there is because they don't tell you. It's not like AFMF2 where it actually gives you the number how much latency there actually is. This doesn't. I mean, if there's a way, let me know down in the comments, but as far as I'm aware, there isn't. So I'm going off feel here and I can feel that there's a bit of latency, but it is way more improved than when I tried this a few updates prior where I just went, nah, I'm not going to use that, you know, but I don't know if you saw it then when I look at this wall specifically and then move around like this, look at the edge of that wall between the gun and Leon's face. Leon, help! So, uh, <laughs> do you see it warping? Like, there's a weird mush. Look at the crosshair. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if it shows up on camera, but the crosshair is jittering like mad because it's having a tough time to differentiate the UI elements of the game to the actual, like, uh, graphics of the game, right? Because like I said, this is throwing over frame gen over everything on screen. We're forcing frame gen in here because the game doesn't have it natively. It's not been like developed for it. And that is even more noticeable here because I've set the scale to 60%, right? So 60% gives you this jittery crosshair. You might see it better here, actually. So I've got a jittery crosshair and that wall just there, like if you look between the gun and Leon's face or even around his hair, like it goes all a bit funky. Now, previous frame gen from Lossless Scaling made the head like twitch, <laughs> like in and out of like consciousness, right? <laughs> this has fixed that but there is a noticeable artifact. However, let's uh, let's just drop this down to see we get more like frames, right? So I'm gonna go to, uh, let's go to 720p and let's put on, um, let's keep that, yes. Let's go and put FSR2 in the game on at quality, right? Now I'm gonna back out. So now, let's just give it a second. We're at 720p. Remember, I've still got RIS on, which is should show here, even though this is so buggy. AFMF2 is not on, but it still shows it. But anyway, I've got RIS on, right? So that makes it look nice and sharp at 720p, totally playable at 720p. But you can see now we're getting about 35 to 40 FPS-ish, but it's throwing it up to like in the 80s. We're almost at 90 FPS here with lossless scaling, right? But if I move around, I've still got a twitchy crosshair. It doesn't seem as bad, actually. It doesn't seem as bad. Uh, but yeah, because probably because we've got more base frames, right? So it's not having to like struggle upping them. But anyway, let's now back out of this 
and go back to lossless scaling. So I'm gonna go up, go to lossless scaling, I'm gonna go unscale, right? Now I'm gonna grab the resolution scale, let's do it with the mouse, right? And drag that all the way up to 100. And then I'm gonna go back to scale and then go and give it a few seconds because we wanna wait for it to pop back up here. Remember it's got like that five second window, right? Now we're going to probably get about the same FPS, maybe, I'm not too sure. I guess the same, it's just it's gonna be outputting more power to get that. So we're at about 80, between high, high 80s. So base game's at 44, frame gen is at 87. Again, latency is slightly noticeable, you know, like I do notice it, so, I mean, when you're doing this, it's not too bad. If I press slash, there, there's a bit of a delay there, but again, it's it's not horrendous. It is playable. And when you're looking around and stuff, like it does make it feel smooth. Again, 40 FPS anyway, I find is absolutely fine on the Ally. Again, I have this game bumped up to like six gig high and stuff like that. So I am making this game struggle. You could easily get far more frames out of this game, but I like this game looking good. But anyway, so now we're at 100%. Watch the crosshair. Do you see how now it's not jittering as much? Do you see it's not like floating everywhere? And do you see that wall is now much more stable between the gun and Leon's head? It's not like freaking out as much. There is still a little bit of visual artifact, but it's not as bad. Let's just go back up to uh, the fire that we were at a second ago, just to compare there, right? And yeah, let's do this twitchy. It's gone. I'm not seeing any twitching crosshair. The good thing is, is that lossless scaling gives you options, right? There is options to dial it in. AFMF2 doesn't really give you those options. And it gives you a nice window to say, hey, you know, here's your base frame rate and here's the new frame rate. It's very cool. What do I think of it? I do find that there is actually slightly more artifacting here than AFMF2. So earlier on when I was testing this, I was using AFMF2, going through the rigmarole of disabling it all, loading up the game with loss of scaling and comparing them. And it's very close, but I still feel like AFMF2 has the edge in terms of visual fidelity, at least in Resident Evil 4 Remake. I noticed the crosshair was more stable, didn't get as much warping, right? But it's very close. The thing with loss of scaling is, you know, you can do a lot here. You can change so many settings here and you can change the resolution scale and all that good stuff. And there's upscalers, you know, there's, there's plenty of stuff that can be done here. It just comes down to if you've been having issues with AFMF2 or not. You know, I know a lot of people are having stuttering and stuff like that. I've not, providing I've just disabled the AMD overlay, right? I've been finding AFMF2 is fine, but this is great, you know? It's getting a lot of support. They seem to update it a lot. Is it worth an extra like $8 or whatever, like nearly six pounds UK? Probably not because AFMF2 is free. It's like already there, do you know what I mean? But if you're someone that likes to tinker and you really want to dial it in, or maybe you want even better like power conservation, then lossless scaling allows that by dropping that resolution scale down to use less GPU power, which might be exactly what you want. So yeah, it is worth it if AFMF2 wasn't like free. <laughs> if it wasn't even around, then I'd be like this all day, this is a winner. But you know, really, they're very, very close. I know I'll probably get hate for saying that, but whatever, let me know why you think loss of scaling is better than AFMF2 or the other way around. Let me know what you use or you like me and I'm totally fine at playing games at like 40 FPS without frame gen. <laughs> Just let me know. I want to hear all your thoughts down in the comments. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Let me know, like this video, subscribe, become a member and you can see these videos early and you get to talk to me and AJ over in our private Discord. Talking of AJ, check out our podcast and his news like series here on this channel as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.